Okay, you guys, this is Ross. And today I wanna to talk to you guys about my Rosianca persimmon tree. This is a persimmon that is a hybrid between an American and an Asian persimmon. And I've had it for a number of years now. I think it's, uh, this might be the end of its seventh season. And before I harvest all of the persimmons today, I think uh, it's pretty much about time. I mean, we're at almost at Christmas now at this point. It's 2021, at the end of 2021. And uh, we've had plenty of frost, plenty of cold, and these persimmons now are getting very soft and they're ready to be harvested. Um, in fact, probably most of the astringency, if not all of it, is gone. I know some people believe that when you get a frost that comes in or a number of frosts, it removes that astringency. I don't necessarily fully believe that. I think there's always still a little bit left and you, you still wanna let them get soft. And I may actually, probably will let these guys continue to ripen inside the house. But these are incredible treats. Uh, again, I've talked about the persimmon at length now at this point on the channel. This is really my favorite fruit. They are seriously one of nature's best confections. Uh, I've been eating and snacking on hoshigaki made by uh, store-bought Hychia persimmons. Now, if I had hundreds of this particular persimmon, then I probably wouldn't have to buy them, uh, which you would expect from a tree of this size, uh, such a good shape now at this point, um, such a good age now at this point, you know, almost at the end of its seventh year here, uh, you would think that it would produce, you know, hundreds of these little persimmons and, and it will, it can. You know, there's definitely uh, varieties that produce smaller fruit like this. A lot of American persimmons, maybe even some Asian types as well. Like, uh, I think the Kumsi is one, Great Wall is one. Uh, but you can produce, especially with you have smaller fruits, many, many fruits. And I would not be surprised to see, you know, at least 300 fruits on this particular tree. But we just haven't been seeing it. Um, and that's kind of the, the big thing with persimmons that you have to kind of deal with. Maybe you can get lucky. Maybe you can find a variety that's precocious. But at the end of the day, you're really going to wait about 7 to 10 years, I think before you really start to see uh, a large crop of persimmons on your tree. Um, so, you know, this is Rosianca and uh, I wanna harvest all the fruits today, like I said. Let me quickly though talk about the form of this tree in that we have, uh, in the past, it is a larger tree, a larger persimmon. You know, it has the American genes in it that produces a larger tree, whereas a lot of the Asian varieties stay smaller, more compact. They tend to produce larger fruit. Um, but I've been really careful about opening up the center. I thought in prior years that we would make sure that, you know, just to maximize as much light into this tree as possible to make sure that it wouldn't drop its fruits. You know, I thought light was absolutely critical to holding on to those fruits. Still don't really know exactly what the issue is with this tree, but Every year now, the last two at least, we've cut out the center and we've been bringing back, you can see a lot of cuts I made in here, bringing back a lot of that upward growth. You know, growth that looks kind of like this. It just shoots up in the air, these big, long water shoots. Um, and this is a lot of the wood here. I actually took out a couple branches prematurely of my peach trees. Uh, but these longer shoots that you can imagine the tree was probably another six to seven, eight feet tall um, on top of already what it is based on that really vigorous water shoots in the center. So I cut all that out. Then I also came around the side and one of the scaffolds here on the bottom I took out because this, you know, this tree was actually has produced good scaffolding down low but the problem is a lot of those branches were getting too close to the ground. You can see here with this branch, there's actually a branch over there in the front. And so I cut out actually one of these right there. You can see that cut. And this is the shadier part of the tree. So I figured, you know, what's the difference? Uh, it is not in a great position. And then of course you have this big scaffold here which is pretty much overarching and taking up that, la uh, that light area. So that whatever's below really isn't gonna do much of anything at all because particularly I've noticed with persimmons is that 
if particular branches on the tree don't get enough light, the, the persimmon tree will just kill the, the branch. Like it just will not support this wood. Here's a great example right here of wood that is dead. And you can just break that the tree. So, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to maximize light. We're trying to get the right form. It's got a great shape. It's really growing outwards and kind of up at the same time so that in the future, we have more future kind of branching that will kind of bend outward and I'll just keep pruning out the center. You know, I think this tree though, it does. It just is a larger variety. You know, this thing, I think even three years ago was 20 feet tall. So if you really want to have a smaller tree, you know, go with an Asian variety. Most of them are a bit smaller. Um, or you have to really focus on your pruning. So let me pick some of the fruits. Oh, this year on this tree, I think I've had about, oh man, I really need some pruning shears for some of these. But I think I've had about on this tree, about 35, 30 fruits, which really isn't that crazy. Um, you know, I think, again, the, the production can be much higher on this. I've already harvested about 15. I've given some away to people, let them try them. I've been snacking on them as they kind of ripen in, in different progression here. But we're going to get a, ourselves a decent harvest. These are just so good that I'm happy to have anything. You know what I mean? Like this in, the, in the, you know, terms of figs, as an example, this is like the black Madeira of figs. Not that Rosianca, I think, is the tastiest variety, which we'll get to in just a minute. I'm really breaking these branches, and this is just not a good idea to be doing this by just pulling them off, I think. Um, I finished with the pruning, so I don't really want to be pruning anything else or ripping off branches on the tree, but... What I mean by it is the black Madeira of figs is that the fruits are so good, just any persimmon that is astringent is so good that to me, it's like eating a black Madeira fig that's perfectly ripened, you know, every time. Um, so I value them, right? And I'm happy to just get what I get rather than, you know, complain, I guess. Um, you can tell they're very soft. They're getting very wrinkled now. And that's what you want. You don't want to pick these or eat these too soon because they are very astringent. It is an astringent variety. Um, in, in terms of taste though, and in terms of how this, you know, these fruits compare to other varieties that I've tried, I first off highly value the astringent persimmons way beyond uh, the non-astringents. It's so cold this morning. And, um, you know, I think they're just way more intensely flavored. They're sweeter. They're more complex. They're bolder. They have a richer flavor. Uh, I've noticed some really incredible flavors this year and, and a lot of different persimmons that I've been able to try uh, that I've grown here. You know, in the past, I've tried a number of different varieties of the sampler or some varieties that people, people have sent me. Um, you know, fruits to actually enjoy and eat. And I have to say that, first off, proc is definitely my favorite. I know we've been touching a lot about, you know, more about that, uh, but proc, in my opinion, has that rum raisin, you know, date, persimmon, uh, fig, uh, you know, dried fruit flavor that to me is just amazing. Now, Celebrity, which we showed you guys on the other side of the house, both of those trees in another video that we did, Celebrity is also very good. And I would rank it also above, I think, Rosianca still. Uh, I was waiting to see if maybe some of these Rosianca fruits would really impress me a bit more as the season progressed. Um, by, by no means is this not a good variety. It is incredibly good. In fact, there's, very, there's no seeds in it. Whereas Proc, I believe, has quite a few seeds. And also... Um, so does Celebrity, if I'm not mistaken. May have, maybe have like one or two seeds in it. Uh, but Celebrity, for me, is even better because it has a, it has a very um, aromatic flavor to it. 
uh, it's weird because you can taste, it seems like to me, I don't know how to describe this exactly. You know, I wouldn't describe it as earthy or something like that. I, I, it has, you can taste the antioxidants in the fruit. Like there's something about it that in that particular persimmon, it just uh, has this, when you eat it, it like lights up your, your sinuses. You know what I mean? Like, um, you know, when you guys eat like a pepper, it kind of really, you know, the, the aromatics kind of really go crazy in your nose. It's the same thing in a way with the celebrity persimmon. I, I've noticed this in the Draper blueberry as well, that you can just taste the antioxidants in it. It's just so high, uh, so valuable for me. Uh, and for me, I think it's above Rosianca. I have not tasted that flavor necessarily in Rosianca. I have also not tasted the rum raisin or, you know, dried fruit flavor is really a better way, I think, to describe it um, in Rosianca either. So for me, it's the number three persimmon that I grow, but you never know. I mean, for other reasons, it may actually, I don't know, take a spot. But for now, you know, I'm rather, I'd rather just have American persimmons uh, like Proc and uh, Celebrity, although they do produce, you know, some seeds, fruits with seeds in them. So if you don't want that, and that's a big deal, then maybe this is just the variety for you. There's so many varieties though that who's to say that I could really recommend this over something else. I'm going to open up the fruit. It's very dry inside. And I think that really is because these fruits didn't ripen totally before frost. So that's another thing. Thoughts on the, the flavor will change, you know, because we didn't really get this thing to totally ripen up frost you know the frost kind of progresses things but I think what happens when you get the frost is that if the fruits are not really totally fully ripe or at least gotten to a point of ripeness then they I don't know how to describe it the the the, the frost and at least now that you know the tree doesn't have any photosynthesis doesn't have any leaves on it then you're, you're kind of just ruined at that point let me just show you guys some of the fruits on the tree. This was a pretty decent branch over here that set well. I don't really know how to fully describe my thoughts on that particular topic, but pretty much can guarantee you that if these fruits were able to ripen fully, 100% to this point, without you know the interruption there of the frost, uh, full photosynthesis in the length of my seeds, my actual growing season, they would be better tasting fruits. Um, and even I think the texture would, would be different as well, which is exactly why I think this particular fruit is so dry. It may actually be astringent. Let me see. So it's not astringent. It's so good, guys. <laughs> it is astringent, actually. There is a little bit of that in there. Um, it's just amazing, this fruit. And even just one of these like this that I would argue is good, very good, but not at the level of proc or celebrity, I think it's still amazing, you know? Um, so that's that. That's Rosianca. I don't really know what else to say. It's obviously a very hardy tree, but so are the Americans, you know? And uh, I don't know if the Americans will really have such a problem, or at least some of the varieties will have such a problem as this particular Rosianca tree with, when it comes to dropping the fruits. You know, maybe those varieties are just a bit more precocious, you know? So anyway, guys, that was Rosianca. Those are some of the cuts we made, why we made them. But, you know, there's cuts everywhere, all over the tree, just the upward growth, trying to thin it out, trying to get it to reach more light, grow outwards rather than up. Um, and we've also headed back a lot of the upward shoots that you see up here.
and I headed them back to get some good branching and control the size of the tree. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching this one. You know, we still got actually more persimmons videos to come, so we'll see you, see you soon. Take care.